glow picking hat. Uh, 2,800 feet of fencing that he can use to build these corrals over here. And he wants three identical rectangular corrals of maximum area. All right, well, let's look at this setup here. I like to use um, X for the horizontal segments and Y for the vertical ones. And if X times Y is the, is the area of one of these pins, well, we have three of them. So we're going to have three Y segments times X. So our area is going to be three X Y. So definitely use X for horizontal and Y for vertical dimensions when you can. Let's look at the geometry we have going on here. So I'll animate this. You can see we've got three rectangular pins. We're using, uh, and I sh I'll show more in just a second, but we're trying to maximize this area. I don't know how well you can see the area when it's animated, so I'm going to pause it and then kind of skip through. So you can see that we have 230,000 uh, square feet area up here. We're over 240, and then we go start going back down. So somewhere here is going to be the maximum. You see that we're about 230, 230,000, 240,000. There we're up over 240,000, 240,000, 244,000. 243,000. So you can definitely see what we're looking for. And then just to make the point, we'll show the X's, right? So these are distances that are horizontal and then the Y's. And so we can see what we have. We have four of the horizontal distances that he has to build fencing for, and then six vertical segments that he has to build fencing for. So this pro tip is all about using X's and Y's when you can, and I'll make this point too, that we can add the X, Y axis in, and that's really nice because then I can locate these points. For example, this is the point X comma zero. This is the point three, uh, excuse me, zero comma three Y. This is the point X comma three Y. This is zero comma Y. So I, if, if I'm in a situation where I need to be able to write an equation, then choosing a place for the origin, a sensible place for the origin somewhere in my picture uh, is definitely good. Usually the bottom left-hand corner means I'm working in the first quadrant where all the values are positive for both X and Y. So let's go back and, sorry, that's what this pro tip is about. Right, definitely use the, the XY coordinate axis when possible. So now let's look at the farmer's constraints because all of these optimization problems have a constraint equation that you can build that will help simplify the optimization equation. It also gives us the closed interval for to make sure that the theory all works. Okay. Well, we were talking about the perimeter of fencing that he has to build. He has four horizontal segments and six vertical segments. So that perimeter has to be a maximum of 2,800. We are going to set it equal to 2,800. So the farmer knows exact, the exact maximum if he uses all of his fencing, what the maximum area will be. And we can solve the constraint for either X or Y. We're just gonna substitute and simplify. I solved it for Y. And when you do that, we can now plug it in, right? We have a constraint solved for Y, so I can plug in here, and this will turn the area formula into a one variable function, right? We have the single variable X. Now that we've substituted in, you can see that this simplifies, by the way, I'm doing two steps here. I'm distributing the X to these two terms and I'm pulling out the six. So I'm factoring with the six and then distributing with the X. And you can see what that comes out to be the, the area formula, the, excuse me, the area function is minus two X squared plus 14 X. Well, this is great. We can take the derivative 
that's easy to do and then we want to find the critical points the critical points are where the derivative is equal to zero these are all the candidates for maximum and minimums these are the ways we find this is the way we find the peaks and valleys and this one we do have a critical point at x equals 350 feet So we need to test whether or not this candidate maximum, critical points are candidates to be the maxes and mins, and how do we tell? Well, the second derivative test is easiest. We can take the second derivative and note that it is negative 4, which means that this function is concave down, and we knew that. This is a, oh, I'm sorry, the equal sign got left off there. So we know that this area formula is a downward facing parabola because of its structure but this knowing that it's downward facing at x equals 350 guarantees us that the critical point is a maximum so now we just need to calculate what y is well we can substitute x back into the constraint equation so there we're substituting in the 350 for x and we solve this and we find out that the dimensions of these pens they should be 350 feet along this side and then this triple segment along the left side each of those segments ought to be 233 and a third feet and when you multiply <coughs> three times uh, 233 and a third, you get 700. So we multiply the x, the 350, which is this dimension, times the 700, which is this dimension, to get the maximum of 24,500. So to return to the problem-solving ideas, I think it's always helpful to sketch a geometric figure. Let me note that sometimes the geometry isn't there on some of these cost functions. That when we do economics problems, you'll find that there often isn't a geometry, a geometric figure you can sketch. You just have to solve it as a word problem. But when you can, definitely try to figure out the geometry with a sketch. The optimization equation, it has to have the quantity you're asked to optimize. So if you're asked to optimize a volume, you're going to write down a volume formula. And you want to make sure that it relates the quantity to, to the givens and the constraints. And we're going to write an equation for each of the constraints. And we're going to substitute the constraints into the optimization equation. That's the simplification that gives us a one variable function. And then we are doing a straightforward optimization from calculus. To find the max or min, we're trying to locate the critical points, which we find by setting the derivative equal to 0. And then to verify, we do have to test. And in our example, we use the second derivative. That concludes the optimization videos.